in love and faithfulness, God saves us. In gratitude and joy, we come. Let, let us worship and praise God's holy name. Amen. <coughs> Please remain standing. Please remain standing if you would like to share in the passing of God's peace. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us share Christ's peace with one another. <laughs> Children are now dismissed for Children's Church.
please utilize the prayer card in your pew for prayer requests to be placed in the offering plate later in the service. For those worshiping online, please place your prayer requests in the comments or direct message the church. I invite you, I invite you now to join me in our breakthrough prayer. Jesus, blow fresh spirit on your church and your people. Open our eyes to the adventures you have planned for us. Give us courage to explore new hopes, dreams, and possibility. Amen. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Mark 8, chapter 31 through 38. Then he began to teach them the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite, quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any wish to come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and then who, and those who will lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For, for what will it profit them to gain the world and profit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of Scripture. Please be seated. Nothing like sight reading in front of your favorite friends, right? All right. Hey, Pat, can I get the mic, please? All right. So at this time, we will take up our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings. This is our opportunity to give back just a portion of those many blessings that our God has bestowed upon us. I do want to remind you that online giving is available at pittsburghumc.org. For those worshiping with us online, again, good morning. We're so glad that you're here. And as Layla shared with us, make sure you uh, uh, put any prayer requests that you have in either the messages below or direct messages. And we want to pray for you. We know that there's a lot going on, and we want to be present in your life through that. Uh, for those worshiping with us in person, again, we are also glad that you're here. And we want you to use these green bookmarks, not only as a information about how to give online, but also as a token of that gift that you gave online. And also, we have our registration pads. Those allow us um, uh, the ability to stay connected with you, to gather in, uh, uh, updated information, and to know that you were present with us. So please take a moment to fill those out. So let us now give generously as our God has generously given to us.
God of ancient days and futures not yet seen. Bring your eternal wisdom to our time of offering. Bring your ancient faith and faithful love to the gifts we now bring. Transform the past with the promise of your future that together our gifts may merge with your spirit to bring transformation and hope to your world, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Please join me in singing our hymn today. It's number 504 in the hymnals, The Old Rugged Cross.
meditation and being present with God. As I share with you every Sunday, be present with God. Know of God's existence and, and, and partnership and connection to him right here, right now. Still that voices of, of to-dos. Still those voices of we're not good enough. And know that you are good enough because of the cross because of the resurrection, and we get to be present, and maybe there was a coworker, or a loved one, or a friend that reached out to you this week and said, you know what, I'm having a hard time. Lift them up. This is your opportunity. Maybe you are that coworker, loved one, or friend who had a rough week, and you say, God, just lift me up today, because I need that. This is our incredible sacred moment set-apart moment where we get to be present with God. So as always, our kneeling rails are available to anyone that would like to utilize them. If that posture of prayer isn't what you would like, um, that's okay. You're more than welcome to stay where you're at and to be present with God. So let's take a few moments, be present with our God, and lift up our joys and concerns. God of wonder and all creation, we bow before your majesty, once again acknowledging your power, your grace, and your mercy. We come on bent knees once again, asking that you stop us in our tracks. This, this powerful prayer, this hard prayer, Lord, stop us in our tracks with your reminders that discipleship is not a sometimes thing. God, we know that we're called to place our whole lives in your care, to follow you, to serve you by caring for others, not just once in a while, but always. And God, we confess and we admit that we're not always ready to do this. The demand is great, the need is greater, our energies are limited. So God, we ask once again that you'd help us Help us to place our trust in our lives in your care fully and unconditionally. God, we know that you will give us strength. You will give us courage and that we will need that we'll, what we will need for this step on our journeys. But be with us, we pray. Help us remember that your love is poured out for all your people and you are never far away. For God, we ask these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
pouncing on your back and, and, and doing these, these grandiose kind of journeying that's going on, but we are asking you to mimic in such a way that brings you closer to God. The three pillars, if you remember, maybe you've got these memorized already, the three pillars of Lent is prayer, and again, as you know, uh, here at Pittsburgh United Methodist Church, we're trying to raise our prayer temperature. We're trying to focus more on that relationship, on that, on that hearing and giving, and that sharing and being connected with God, praying without ceasing. That's our goal. Fasting. So oftentimes it's giving up soda, giving up chocolate, things of that nature. But it's also, it's not just giving up food. Um, it's also can giving up bad habits and poor choices that are being made. It's also adding to maybe the devotional or Bible reading. Remember, the seven chapters a day gets you through the entire uh, uh, New Testament um, through this season of Lent. So prayer partners, do you have somebody that you can pray with? Maybe it's a spouse, maybe it's a loved one, a friend, or, or uh, a neighbor um, that you can say, hey, I wanna, can we pray every Tuesday? I would love for us to get together. I'll make the coffee. Let's just get together and let's pray for one another. Lent is that incredible time, that set apart moment where we say, God, I know I'm not all that bad. All, I'm not all that in a bag of chips, but I know you are. So help me, help there to be less of me and more of you. So for me, when I was thinking about, okay, what are the things that we can really <clears throat> focus in on and laser focus on for the season of Lent, and that's listening. And maybe you're like me, and you really just aren't good at listening. Um, I, you know, as a pastor, you're like, well, pastor, that's your job. You're supposed to listen. That's, that's, that's kind of what you do. But it, just because that's what I do doesn't mean that's what comes easily to me. I'm an easily distracted individual. It's hard for me to focus. And to, I don't need that many bouncing heads. But yes, I am an easily distracted individual. Um, and it's harder for me to focus. And when, so when there's something going on, I, I say, God, like, give me the ears to hear. Right? We hear that in the scripture. He says that J Jesus asked that, uh, that those, um, um, they don't have ears to hear yet. But disciples, I'll let you know what's going on. So I say, God, give me the ears to hear so I can be a better disciple. And I think maybe you're like me in that, that maybe you've got some growing edges in listening. And maybe there's a way in, you, in which when we, know this, we know this research that shows that being loved and being heard is identical. And people can't tell the difference of being loved or being heard. And maybe that's what God's calling us to do, to be better listeners, not only to God in the season of life, that's what it's about, but also to our brothers and sisters in Christ and to those that need to hear the good news this day. Or maybe you're like this person that, it, or in, that is really uh, task-oriented. See, there's a good story from years ago, uh, many years ago, about a top executive with a telegraph company. See, I told you it was a few years ago, who went on a trip. It was extremely cold outside, and when he arrived at the bus station, so he went into a local telegraph station hoping to get warmed. When he got inside, however, it was cold. He noticed there was no fire in the fireplace. He said to the young telegraph operator, why don't you build a fire in the place and warm it up? And the young man said, listen, mister, I'm too busy to send telegram, uh, sending telegrams to build fires, right? So this is going to preach in many ways, right? So I'm too busy to, to uh, doing my job to make sure I don't freeze to death. Okay? That's what he told this person. The man then told this boy that he was the vice president of the company and that he wanted him to send a telegram to the home office at once. He said, okay, I can do that. And he says, what's the message you want me to send? And he said, fire this man immediately. So the young telegraph operator got the message. A moment later, he brought a load of wood into the office and began to build a fire. The executive asked, young man, have you sent the telegram yet? And the young telegraph operator said, listen, mister, I'm too busy building fires to send telegrams. <laughs> Clever, but it's also that truth that I think we can relate to, right? Is how many times do we get task-oriented that we forget the important stuff? That we get so focused on what we're doing that we, we realize we, we've lost all of it already because we, we've lost our focus. We've lost, lost that bigger understanding that it's more than us. It's more than the community and the people we see day in and day out. So in our gospel lesson for today, a, a hard lesson, especially for the disciples. Man, Jesus really gave them a hard time with this. Is you know they were looking for a king, they weren't looking for um, um, they were looking for a crown. They weren't looking for a cross. So Jesus just unloads on them, right? We get this miracle of, of Jesus beforehand, and Jesus heals this person. He, sp he spits on them, puts it in his, I know it wasn't, it's kind of gross, right? But he puts it on his hands. He goes, hey, how do you see now? He goes, well, 
I don't see very well. They kind of look like trees. And Jesus goes, okay, how about now? And he goes, wow, this is pretty great. And we've got this two-step process that, yes, he was able to see, but he wasn't able to see clearly. And then we go into this passage where Jesus says, hey, by the way, um, yeah, thanks for being my disciple. The miracle stuff's great, but I'm going to get beat up. I'm going to endure a lot of suffering, and um, I'm going to die. Um, it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be, it's going to be awful. Um, and then we've got this passage, this moment where Peter, you know, the one that jumps out on the boat says, hey, I want to be like you, Jesus. I want to walk on water. And he, he looks down, sees the water, and he falls down in the water. And Jesus grabs him and says, ye of little faith, right? And he says, come on, you got this. And we've got Peter that's ready to strike um, and when the, when the motor's, motor's there. But we also have the Peter where Jesus says, I'm gonna build, you're the now called the rock where I'm going to build my church. We, we have the same Peter that's sitting here, and he's hearing these words. And he hears that, 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 that the, the one that he loves so dearly, his rabbi, his teacher, the one that he's given up everything for, is telling him that he's about to be persecuted, suffered, and killed. And then Jesus then says, but don't worry. In three days, I'm going to rise. It's all in the scripture that... Um, that Layla read for us, right? We, we've got all this passage that we're, we're, we're reading uh, uh, and, and we see that, but maybe you're like me and you've been told bad news before and it doesn't matter what they say afterwards, right? You're not paying attention. I'm sorry to tell you, but you have cancer. Okay. But it's treatable and we've got a great plan for you. So all I hear is I have cancer. Is that, is that what you're saying? Right? Like, in that example, right? It's the idea that when we get bad news, hey, I'm sorry to tell you, but your loved one's not coming home tonight. Hey, I'm sorry to tell you that this wasn't going the way you wanted. Hey, I'm sorry that this isn't the way you wanted. All of a sudden, all of our body goes into fight or flight. We get all the hormones. We get all the difficulties going on in our life, and we can't hear anything else. So we want to judge Peter because he jumps up, you know, good old eager Peter. He's like, Jesus, come here. And they say that he actually, Jesus is teaching, saying, hey, I'm about to suffer. I'm about to die, but it's okay. In three days, I'm going to rise from the grave. This is incredible news. But all Peter's hearing is, oh, I'm going to lose my friend. I'm going to lose my teacher. This community, look, look at all the sick people. He heals them. He's even allowing us eventually, right? Uh, we're going to heal as well. But he's the power. We, we can't lose him. Peter, did you hear? Three days. I don't, I don't care. So he grabs Jesus by the arm. At least that's in my holy imagination. He grabs Jesus by the arm and pulls him and says, Jesus, Jesus, we got to talk. And he's like, okay, what? What's going on, Peter? And he says, don't let this happen. This can't happen. You can't do this. And Jesus, with the exclamation mark, get behind me, Satan. Was he actually calling his disciples Satan? Or was he saying, hey, I just went into this wilderness journey for 40 days and 40 nights. I had all these temptations. And do you think that this temptation wasn't one of them? It absolutely was. And here it is again. This isn't of the spirit of the divine. This is the spirit of, 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 the, de of the deception, of the deceiver, of the one that accuses. No, I don't want this in my life. Get, get behind me, Satan. He looks at his disciples, he looks at Peter and says, no, this isn't, you, your brain isn't right, your thought isn't right, your love, your focus isn't where it needs to be. You weren't divinely listening. You weren't listening to the bigger picture. You weren't seeing how God is going to work in this. In three days, I'm going to rise. And then we go on to read in our, in our gospel lesson where he goes on to tell them that not only is he going to go through this, but he's calling them the greatest will be last, last will be first. He's telling them that they have to bear crosses and that there are, they too are going to go through these hard times. And it is a hard lesson to hear. They're too busy sending the telegraphs that they're not tending to the fire. Yes, it's going to be hard. Yes, it's going to be unad unimaginably difficult but God's going to use it in a way that you can never imagine, and God's going to bless you. For the disciples, this was left field. 
They did not expect this to be the answer. You see, when you think of a Messiah, when you think of a Savior, when you have been persecuted by the Roman Empire, by Babylon, by all these centuries of persecution, you've been enslaved and you've gone through all these things, the last thing you want to hear from your Messiah is that you're just going to lay down. Wait, wait, what? I gave up everything, Jesus. My house, my family, my, my dog, I don't know, but, you know, that's important to me. The cat, that was okay, right? Well, leave that alone. I'm sorry, I can't help it. I love you guys. Uh, but dogs are so much better. Um, so, um, so he's sitting there, and they're like, we gave up everything. I gave up my, what is the country song? I gave up my, my, my wife, my truck, my, you know, okay. Uh, I gave up all this stuff for you. And I'm following you. And I thought we were, you know, I don't need a lot of money, but I was kind of thinking, like, uh, we get, like, the fatted cow, you know, I thought we would get, like, I get to sit on your right and left. Remember that story where they thought they were going to get that great power? Oh, man, I thought thought we were going to be able to live in the kingdom. I thought I was going to get to kill some people. Man, they thought he was going to be a conqueror. That's what David was. So wouldn't it make sense for this same Messiah to be the same, to to be this great conqueror? So they they see this, and then we see Peter, and we say, Peter, come on, man, get back in line. You don't know what you're thinking. But we look at Peter, and we're like, you're right. This is left field. This is something we weren't expecting. We were not expecting a cross. We wanted a crown. And are we so much different than the disciples? When we look at Jesus, I'm not talking about prosperity gospel. I'm the, the idea that the more you give, the more you get, and, then, and that you have to be sacri- uh, sacrificial and all that kind of stuff. I'm not talking about that. But I think in some vein, we still think in many ways that if I'm just a good person, I'm going to get all that in a bag of chips. I don't know why I need chips, but I'll get some later now that I keep talking about. That sounds good. Cool Ranch Doritos, anybody in the house with me? Cool Ranch Doritos? Thank you. Appreciate you. All right. Um, and barbecue Fritos are hard to find too. We'll leave that alone. I don't know what's going on. See, this is what happens when I don't look at my notes, but um, um, we'll get chips afterwards. Um, but we think about this and we think, we think okay, it's, it's, um, it's more, uh, uh, we think we're going to get all these things. Well, I'm part of a fancy church. They've got nice windows. Uh, things are clean. It's nice. But when we look at this and we read what does discipleship really mean, It's messy. We're dealing with people. And that divine calling on our lives calls us to be uncomfortable, and it's difficult. They signed on for a crown, not a cross. You see, the story is astonishingly relevant. Peter was blinded by his own preconceptions. His cherished convictions about what the Messiah's agenda should be would not allow him to see what the Messiah's agenda must be. The first stage of grief, okay, you mouthed it, all right, you get a gold star. What, what, what is it? Denial. Denial. Uh, Ryan, good job, man. Denial. And of course, we look through the different stages of grief and we go in and out, but the first thing, so we look at this, right? We look at Peter, we want to judge him, we want to say, you, 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 you not so smart person. I wanted to use another word, I'm getting better, right? You not so smart person. We, you, you, know, you should know better. But we look at Peter and we go, duh. He, he's grieving. He doesn't want to say goodbye. He doesn't want to let go. He doesn't want to be persecuted. He's still looking to that crown. So Jesus says, stop tempting me. I want that too. Do you not think I want that as well? Gethsemane, Lord, God, if you can take this cup away from me, take it away from me. Of course God doesn't want to go through this. Of course Jesus doesn't want to go through the persecution. Fully God, fully human, and it hurts. Yet that's what we and the disciples are called to. Jesus hears Peter out, then turning and looking to all the disciples, he rebukes Peter. And what a rebuke it is. Peter is speaking for Satan, the great deceiver. From the beginning of Jesus' ministry, Satan was out to change the wilderness, uh, change his course, to turn him away from the cross, to be another kind of Messiah. The wilderness of temptation we discussed last week were temptations to avoid the cross by being another kind of Messiah, a temptation that Jesus faces again on the last night before his arrest and brutal death when in the garden he pleads for a cross-like course to the crown. But it's not possible. No No cross, no crown. 
as long as self reigns, as long as we listen to the voices of this world, we will forever be seeking painless shortcuts to the kingdom. And you know what I'm talking about. Okay, I'll do that, but only if my schedule allows it. Okay, I'll do that, but I don't want to sacrifice too much. And I'm not just talking about you. I'm talking about me as a pastor as well. Like, yeah, that initiative sounds great. Going out and doing the mission in Africa sounds great, but it also sounds kind of dangerous and a lot of money, and I don't know if I really want to. But is God calling you to it? Is this a passion that God put on your heart? Is something stirring inside of you and saying, maybe, maybe the Holy Spirit is working in me, that, that maybe it is Africa, maybe it's Guatemala, maybe whatever it may be. Maybe it's your backyard, maybe it's the city of Indianapolis, maybe it's Atlanta, Georgia, I don't know, but maybe God's calling something in your heart and you're like, no, 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 I'm comfy, I'm comfy right here. Mm-hmm. No, I'm good. I got my lazy boy, nope, just leave me alone. God calls and stirs on us, and it's hard work. So when we see Peter, we say, no, we're not like him, but the reality of it is we we stir and we respond just like him. But only when we deny ourselves and take up the cross can we follow Jesus. All of our attempts to save our lives are futile. All of our efforts to make another way are a denial of the one who showed us the way, the way of the cross. This is true discipleship. In the end, true messiahship and true discipleship are inextricably connected. When we are finally willing to accept Jesus for who he is, the suffering one who lays down his life for others, then we can understand we who are to be in denying self, we can take the, up the cross and follow him. So my last kind of closing story I want to share with you is um, many of you know that um, um, to, to be wed in this church and you want to utilize me as your, as your pastor, I require premarital counseling. Um, marriage is hard. And statistically speaking, a lot of marriages are failing these days. Um, I don't remember the uh, stat, stats. One time it was 40%. One of them said it was 60% were failing. Uh, either way, it's way, cl- way too close to 50%. So I want to give as many uh, tools and assets as I can so that a couple can survive and do well in their marriage as best as they can. And one of the tools I do is I do an active listening uh, strategy where the one person shares something. They can share whatever they want. Um, I would like for you to take out the trash more often, and if you took out the trash more often, that would make me happy, okay? So, the, uh, so that was the assertiveness. The assertiveness, I'm being assertive and sharing, this is what I want. And then the act of listening is what I hear you say is that I don't take out the trash enough and you're not happy with me. No, that's not active listening. That's, that's, made, that's being defensive, right? That's not really being focused. So the act of listening is simply a parroting back what you heard. What I hear you say is that you'd like for me to take out the trash more often. If I do so, that'd make you happy. And then the couple says, yes, I kid you not, two thirds of all my couples cannot do this activity. They go into uh, assuming assumptions and making back and forth, and there can be frustrations that are with it. Well, I thought I took out the trash far enough. That's not what we're working on here today. What we're working on is being heard. So when we know this statistic, again, as I shared with you, that actually being heard means that we are loved, this changes our lives. When we are truly heard, we are blessed. The mindset, um, we have this mindset of that you did this for me. You, you stopped what you were doing to honestly hear me. It wasn't like, how are you? You're good, okay, bye. It was, hey, are you, are you okay? Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, let, let's sit down. Let's talk. That changes lives. When we intentionally make time for another human being, when we say, I care about your stuff. I don't have all the answers, but I'm here to listen. You change lives. God is not conformed to human expectations or desires, for God is found in uncertainty, danger, and suffering, precisely where human wisdom perceives God's absence. The, the, to confess Jesus as Messiah is to actively listen and recognize his dying body on the cross and recognize the discipleship is a way of our own cross. It's not about us. It's sacrificial love toward others. So when you listen to the divine, you see and experience like, uh, in life differently. You can do hard things with God's help, and it begins with listening to Jesus and the call of the cross. Let us pray. God of grace and mercy, thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of voice that 
um, to get through today's message, Lord. Thank you for um, this incredible community called Pittsburgh United Methodist Church, where we're striving to love, connect, and serve just like Jesus. And Lord, that just like Jesus part is so hard today when we know that it requires inqu- suffering. It requires to not be self-focused, but to be focused on you. So God, work anew in us right now. Take away us and replace it with you. We boldly pray, God. We know it's hard, and we know we're going to fail so many times, even by the, by the day's end. But God, we want to be more like you. So work anew in our lives and our hearts. Transform us this day so that, we can't, so that we're not just cross-focused, but we are resurrected and given new life in you, we pray. Amen. All right, our mu- as our musicians come forward and get ready, I do have a few announcements for us this morning. Um, the first thing I want to share is thank you. Thank you to everyone that came out to Arnie's this week. On uh, Monday, we did a Dine to Donate, um, and they were thankful enough to give us 20% uh, back. So as you can see the numbers up there, um, we earned uh, close to $200. So uh, congratulations to our Vacation Bible School team. That'll be a good start for them to get started. And as you know, as we get closer to VBS, um, uh, we do have the dates. I just don't have them in my head right now. Um, but um, those dates will be shared, and you can volunteer, and also there'll be more opportunities to give. Also, in the back of the congregation right now, you're going to see a clear, uh, a clear box back there, and it's for our children's church spare change for Lent. Um, the, our children's church said, hey, we want to do something special. So the kiddos and you are encouraged as well to bring your spare change. And all of those funds, we're going to do that all the way through the season of Lent, and all that spare change is going to Riley's Children's Hospital. So if you'd like to give to that, I know some of you already given your pop tabs to help out with the Ronald McDonald House. That's awesome as well. This is another way to serve or alms give during the season of Lent. I also want to remind you that about Pizza with a Pastor, it's been a while since we've had one of these, but this is your opportunity that if you've been contemplating membership, if you've been contemplating, hey, I know this general conference stuff is coming up. I know um, there's these bigger conversations about what does it mean to be United Methodist. Come and have a lunch on me, on, um, and we're going to have some pizza, the best meal that there is. Um, we're going to have some pizza, and we'll be have other stuff as well. But come have Pizza with a Pastor. If you're interested in that, about becoming a member, asking questions, and learning more about uh, the United Methodist Church, um, the sign-up sheet is right outside at our Welcome Center. Also, if you're online, direct message us, and we'll get that to you as well. Um, I don't see Teresa Lucas with us. Oh, you are. Do you have any announcements for us today? I didn't think you did. Okay, so we'll just get that last slide. So as a reminder, we are in the midst of a pastoral transition. Um, I will be going to Southport United Methodist First July, uh, effective July, Southport United Methodist Church, effective July 1st. Um, and I am fully devoted and working hard, um, and, and so I'm still here. Um, the, the staff parish will be working with our conference superintendent, Elise Fulbright, um, and when that person does a take-in and they have their meeting, that following Sunday, it will be announced on Sunday, and then we can start those interactions of making a good transition. So if you have any questions in that process, Teresa and her team, myself, were available to you in that time. So um, without further ado, if you're ready, let's stand up and let's close our moments of worship with our closing song, Rise Up. that you believed safe and sound stuck in the ground too lost to be found you're just asleep
In this life of the church, we like to celebrate a lot of things, and uh, as of late, we've been celebrating a lot of Eagle Scouts, so I can't help but to celebrate Tori Yoder, who is our newest Eagle Scout. So, Tori, congratulations to you. We are very proud of you and your scouting family. You've done a lot for this church and for our community, and we thank you. Um, also, we've got Devin Miller, who's going to be having his Eagle Scout fundraiser next Saturday. So if you're looking for a meal next Saturday and you'd like to su uh, su uh, help support an Eagle Scout uh, project, that would be your opportunity as well. So as we leave these moments of worship, receive now this benediction. The step of discipleship requires commitment and faith. Go now in peace. Bring the good news of Jesus' love to all people. Do not be afraid. God is with you. Go in peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Go in peace.